All right, in advance of tonight's men's national championship game, let's talk about Purdue versus UConn with one of our favorites back here from CBS and Turner Sports, the one and only Seth Davis back here in the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Seth? Doing all right, Rich. End of the road here, man. It is a, a great season and a, and a great tournament. And and we have the matchup that we've been wanting uh, for a very long time. So I'm psyched. And so let's jump into it. I mean, Purdue going from being one and done last year, losing to a 16 seed and now making it to the final game against UConn. Uh, what do they have, do you think, that can shock the world tonight? Well, first of all, it's it's really amazing when you think about, you know, the notion of a one seed losing to a 16. It was almost it was like the last thing in sports that hadn't happened. And now it's happened twice. And both times it happened, the team that lost went to the national championship game the next year. So there's a lot of poetry in that. There's a lot of life lessons in that. A lot of luck in that, both good luck and bad luck. Um, you know, Purdue clearly obviously has a puncher's chance uh, in this game. Two reasons come to mind. First and foremost, quite clearly, is yes. the big maple, Zach Eady. Uh, <laughs> seven foot four, 280 pounds. Uh, I've been saying throughout the tournament, the most significant facet in the NCAA tournament is Zach Eady's ability to draw fouls. He does it better than any player in the country. And so you have, always have a chance. You know he's going to get you 20 and 12 just by rolling out of bed. He has a chance to go for 40, um, but he has a chance to – significantly alter what you you do as the opponent because of that ability to draw fouls so um he's obviously a problem now uconn uh, does have a player in uh, donovan Klingon who's better suited to guard edie than any player in the country especially the way that he's been playing over these last few weeks so that's obviously the matchup that we're all going to be looking for and then you know something i'm not sure the casual fan really appreciates about purdue is that all season long, they've been the best three-point shooting team in the country by percentage. I think technically they're second right now, but um, you know they were terrific uh, on Saturday night against North Carolina State from three, and they have a lot of different guys, Rich, who can make three-pointers. They, you know, have four to, anywhere between four and seven, depending on the game, guys who are able to, to to make threes. So when you have the immovable object inside in Zach Eady, and then you surround him with all of these great shooters they could have, you know, one of these really good shooting nights that makes them very difficult to defend. So they can control the tempo, go to Edie, get UConn's front court guys into foul trouble, and then shoot uh, efficiently from three-point range. The final thing would be taking care of the basketball, which they did a very poor job of uh, on Saturday night. So those would be the three keys of the game, I think, for Purdue. Yeah, and the photograph we had just showed of, of Edie and, uh, against NC State – and he's the only human being who could turn DJ Burns Jr. into Muggsy Bogues, right? I mean, look at that. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's absolutely remarkable how, and, and, and again, anybody who might be surfing into the men's national championship game tonight, you could tell Edie the minute he, he just <laughs> enters the screen who he is. So what is Dan Hurley's plan here? Just run a bunch of people at him? Or what do you think tonight? Seth. Well, 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 he's got the personnel for it now. I mean, like you talk about DJ Burns, he's listed at, I think, 6'9", 260. <laughs> well, not 260, obviously. Right. Uh, um, so if he's 6'9", he's probably actually 6'8". I mean, Zach Eady is actually 7'4". And so that's 7 inches. That's a big deal. Donovan Klingon seven 7'2". And he's, you know, not giving up a ton of weight to, to Zach Eady. And he's um, far more uh, agile, especially in terms of his defensive abilities. So, you know, one thing that you do about Edie, you know, people talk about stopping him. How do you guard him? Well, a big way to counter him is to make him guard you. And Donovan's abil Donovan Klingon's ability to come out um, and, and play uh, screens and set screens for UConn's guards, that puts the opposing big man in a, in a really tenuous situation. Now, normally Matt Painter, um, plays what you know we call drop coverage, which means that the, the the man who is guarding the screener in this case Klingon hangs back, but that means that that opens things up for UConn's guards both for shooting and for driving. So that becomes a big time problem making Zach Eady guard in space. But beyond that, you know Klingon is uh, seven two. They also have Samson Johnson, who's a six foot ten forward coming off the bench they have a lot of guys who can help so it's a schematic thing you kind of crowd ed space again you're not going to hold them to eight points but you also don't want him to get 40 um and you want to be able to guard him in a way that doesn't completely leave open those three-point shooters so if you had to tilt in one direction rich 
Um, you know, I'm not great at math, but I do think that three is more than two. So you kind of <laughs> almost let Edie get his and then stay at home on, on, on the three point shooters. But, you know, UConn size advantage really translates even more so to the perimeter. Stefan Castle, their freshman, he's six, six. Mm. Tristan Newton uh, is six, is six, four. Cam Spencer, Sp- Cam Spencer is six foot four. So their guards are bigger than all of Purdue's guards on the perimeter. That's a very uh, troublesome proposition for Purdue because if you look at the way that NC State guarded them, Braden Smith, um, Purdue's sophomore point guard, has had an outstanding season, had probably his worst game of the year going up against those NC State guards who did a really good job on him. Seth Davis here on the Rich Eisen Show. So let's say UConn does win tonight <laughs> and uh, does its usual thing, wins by bu- double digits again, right? And I, I mean, that uh, might have been one of uh, Alabama's which I, greatest. Which I think it's going to happen, by the way. I mean, I think UConn's going to win significantly, but go ahead. So, so I mean, I, I, you could say one of Alabama's greatest um, achievements uh, over the weekend was they, they actually threatened on occasion single digits, right? And so so where does this put UConn if if they if they do this and pull it off tonight as you expect? Where, where, where do you where do you place this UConn team teams? Well, well, it, uh, among the most dominant, you know, it's when we compare eras, you know, you're comparing them with you know '96 Kentucky, '92 Duke, '73 UCLA. You know, you can really go back in history, but to me, it's more significant comparing them against their current competition, right? Comparing them against the teams that they're playing now. They won last year's NCAA tournament by 20 points a game, Mm. 20.0. Like that's literally literally average. This year, I think it's 23 or 24. Um, And the thing that's astounding, I think I said this last time, Rich, is they have a whole new team. I mean, the two teams that have repeated since UCLA did it were Duke 91-92, Florida 2006-2007. Both teams basically returned intact. UConn lost three starters from last year's national champs. They lost five of their top eight scorers. Um, And so for them to return, and they've had a better season. Last year's team was the number four seed, did not win the Big East regular season, did not win the Big East tournament. So this team will absolutely go down in history as one of the all-time greats if they win tonight. And this stretch of what they're doing and what Dan Hurley has done, he's basically put himself in the Hall of Fame. They win this game tonight, regardless almost of what, Uh, He does the rest of of his career. So it's hard enough to repeat when you have the same players. Um, For him to be able to do this with a totally different team and actually be better, I mean, I don't know that there's a historical parallel um, in the last 50 years to what's happening. Seth Davis, CBS, Turner Sports, getting ready for the national championship game tonight right here on the Rich Eisen Show. So, Seth, uh, I did not see... Andy Enfield leaving USC for SMU, starting a domino effect that leads to John Calipari winding up in Arkansas, but such is life. What the hell is basically my question for you and your two (laughs) cents on that? Well, you got to, you got to go before then because SMU um, blew a lead in their conference tournament and lost a game and the school fired Rob Lanier only after two years, which is, is, is really not cool. I mean, you don't, whatever it happened so that's that was the first domino that was what we were kind of all mm-hmm. saying last night like when smu fired rob lanier not like anybody paid any attention to that yeah. um who could have imagined how the dominoes um would go into effect it starts with first of all smu is going into the acc next year because we all know that dallas is on the atlantic coast uh as apparently um stanford and cal is now on the atlantic coast this is uh, college athletics um they put a lot of money at andy enfield um, who was basically maybe facing a bad situation by next year at USC. So $33 million, I think, guaranteed money for Andy. That was kind of a no-brainer. Eric Musselman has a so- Southern California ties. He's always wanted that job. As soon as that job came open, I, I started texting. Plus, I live in L.A., as, as do you. So um, you could see that happening. And what's interesting about the Arkansas situation, uh, Rich, is their first choice was Chris Beard. And they were ready to pay him a lot of money. And Chris was not comfortable leaving Ole Miss after only one year. They went after Jerome Tang at Kansas State. He's only been there for two years. He uh, was comfortable in his situation. He stayed there. So Calipari is his third choice. This came together in a very, very quick fashion. And it came together because of John Tyson, who's part of the Tyson Foods uh, 
family, a billionaire who's longtime friends with John Calipari, went to Arkansas and said, let me make the call and see if we can put this together. And Calipari was all ears. Look, Calipari's been in Kentucky for 15 years. He's done an amazing job. He's in the Hall of Fame. He's a really, really good basketball coach. For a variety of reasons, many of which are not necessarily in his control, they flamed out in the NCAA tournament. And that's how teams are judged. I mean, they had a great season. It just so happened they lost um, to an Oakland team that played great. And it was a close game. You know, they win in that game. We're not even having this conversation. So um, I think 15 years is a long time for anybody to be in any job. Uh, for a coach like Calipari in a high-profile place like Kentucky, um, I think he saw an opportunity to move on, get a fresh start. I think it's good for him. I think it's good for Kentucky because if Kentucky wanted to fire Calipari, it owed him $33 million. That's real money now. Um, and so now they don't owe him a dime. And Arkansas doesn't have to pay about it. So Arkansas gets a great coach and a fresh start. Kentucky gets a fresh start. Um, it's good for Calipari. And frankly, I think it's good for college basketball. Change is good. I mean, this is what you know, we're already kind of looking forward to next year when, when you know, Calipari takes his Arkansas team back into Rupp Arena. Now, Arkansas, now Kentucky's got to make a hire. Um, and that's going to open up a lot of dominoes. So it's going to be a fast and furious couple of weeks in college basketball. Yeah, it's a lot of chicken, I'm sure, that got spent on a buyout, I'm assuming, um, you know, for yeah. Calipari to be free to do what he did last night. So before I let you go, who, who do you think is a fit for the Kentucky job, Seth? I think it's going to be Scott Drew. I think, you know, Scott Drew um, has been at Baylor a long time. He has an economic buyout. It's under $5 million. Um, and if you're Kentucky, you got to go get someone of that caliber. So I think that's the first place that you start. I think maybe you kick the tires on Danny Hurley, um, see what that situation looks like, see what UConn is, is prepared to do. You know, I think the guy who I think would crush it is Nate Oates, but he's got an $18 million buyout. That's a non-starter. Bruce Pearl is another one. So it's not, obviously Kentucky is not just about the inside the, the rectangle of the basketball court, right? I mean, it's a big job. You need a big personality, someone who can understand everything that comes along with being the coach at Kentucky. There are not many. Bruce Pearl would be fantastic. Very, He's got an eight-figure buyout as well. So it's a combination of who's a good coach, who's a good fit for the culture of the job, but then who's also economical, and and, and who would take it. And so I think it's I'm, I'm going to make the prediction right now that it's going to be Scott Drew. And then we're sharpieing UConn tonight, is what you're saying. Well, let's not abuse the sharpie now. It leaves a stain. So we'll mm -hmm. we'll we'll wait, but um, that is definitely my prediction that UConn wins. And for those who care, I think they will cover the point spread. I think they're going to win it emphatically. I just don't think that Purdue can handle the length, strength, and athleticism that that UConn's going to throw out. Look tonight. at you! Look at you talking to all my listeners and viewers. Thanks for the call. I know. Th I know. That's really everything I said. That's literally only, the only thing people wanted to know. Mostly so they can bet the opposite way. <laughs> so the line's going to the line's going to move to Purdue because I because I just said that. Pull a full Costanza. Thanks for the zooms, Chef uh, Seth, for uh, this uh, this it. show and uh, and a couple weeks ago as well. We'll chat again soon. Thanks again, brother. Always a pleasure. Thanks, At Barry. Seth Davis Hoops on the X Machine right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.